Now we talk about the derivative. And the way we define the derivative is actually related to the definition of the derivative at a point. We just do a variable substitution. So I define this variable h in terms of other things that are already present, namely x and a. And so what this means is that I'm actually getting an equivalent expression. The only sort of difference is that I'm kind of changing how it looks, but it's really saying the same thing. And uh, what I do is I substitute x minus a, I replace that with h. After all, that's equivalent. And then I also solve for a. So if you take this uh, equation and solve for a, you could add a to the left, subtract a h to the right, and you would get that a is equal to x minus h. If we then make that substitution into f of a, then uh, putting that into our uh, derivative formula, we have this formulation. And the reason why we go through all of this trouble is because this equation does not have a in it. So this is not the derivative at any particular point. This is the generic derivative that holds uh, everywhere that it's defined. So, so we no longer have the derivative at a point. We just have the derivative, which is a function. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and take uh, an example. So still working with x squared, we plug all the information into the new formulation. Now, after you've plugged in, you should be able to simplify the numerator. You should be able to figure out what this limit is on your own. Uh, but I will go ahead and say a little bit about how you get from this step, this step to that step. And it's by, of course, you know, distributing out this multiplication, you should get x squared minus 2xh uh, plus h squared. Then you distribute the negative in, cancel any terms that, you know, you've got a, a plus x squared and a minus x squared after you've reached that step. Um, and so you should arrive at this point. And from here, you can simplify further in one of two ways, whichever way you like to think about it. You can think about distributing the division, and in that case, you get 2x minus h, right? Or you can think about factoring out h and then canceling the factors, whichever way you like to think about it. Essentially, what you're left over with is 2x minus h, and you take the limit as h goes to 0. Well, at that point, you can just replace h with 0 and the end result is 2x. So notice that this is, in fact, a function. This is not a number. It cannot be the slope of a, a tangent line or anything like that. So this is the derivative. It is a function. Now, it is related to the derivative at a point by the following fact. It, we earlier found that the derivative of this function at 2 was equal to 4, and we found it this way. You could just as well have found it by computing the derivative and plugging in 2. Uh, that would also tell you 4. So that's the relationship between the two things. But they really are different. The derivative is not the same thing as the derivative at a point. OK. Uh, and, and the important lesson is that the derivative, although it is not the slope, it can tell you the slope of the tangent line if you evaluate it at a particular point. So, okay, now uh, just for a little bit of tidying up loose ends, um, there is some common notation. So, so I have been writing the derivative, you know, when I write this here, what I'm basically telling you is a little piece of notation, that this is how we write the derivative. When I want to ask you about the derivative or when I want to find the derivative, I write it this way. And then, you know, I say that it's equal to 2x. And uh, so that's just the, the notation that we use to name the derivative. Well, there are other notations as well. And all of these other notations are what we call Leibniz notation. So I've been emphasizing how physics uh, developed from Aristotle to Galileo to Newton, skipping a huge amount of detail that really uh, does not do the story justice. But in any case, that's the rough story that I've been giving you. Well, it turns out that Newton invented calculus to solve his physics problems, but uh, Leibniz basically did the same thing at the same time. Uh, in any case, 
uh, uh, we name you know uh, both Leibniz and Newton wrote in notation kind of like this, but I think just to honor Leibniz contributions, we call this Leibniz notation. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, this notation though will be helpful in certain circumstances and we'll see it later on in this video sequence, but we'll really see it in uh, future video sequences with more and more advanced calculus. Leibniz notation will be a handy tool. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, oh right, and, and just to illustrate further what I'm talking about with this notation, if we say that f of x is equal to sine x, then the derivative of sine x, we write this way or this way, right? These are all equivalent ways of talking about the derivative of sine. Okay, one last thing is that sympi, or uh, next to last thing, is that sympi uh, can calculate derivatives for you. So uh, up here, I list out a bunch of functions defined in sympi, and I go ahead and um, I don't want to plot just yet, so, uh, so I'll comment that out. But and then what I had basically have it do is loop through, you know, go through the list and print uh, print out the derivative of each thing. So if I run this, it tells me all of these derivatives, right? The derivative of one is zero. The derivative of x is one. The derivative of x squared we've already seen is two x x cubed, the derivative is 3x squared, the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That's pretty interesting. Um, but in any case, so uh, I do all of that with basically the, the most important thing in the code here is that I write sp.diff of my function. So if I wrote sp.diff of, uh, let's say, sp.sine x, I am differentiating with respect to x. That's why I have to put that little x there. But that's you know that's a conversation for another time. The important lesson is how do you get sympy to compute the derivative, and this code gets the derivative. So the derivative of sine is cosine. Uh, so anyway, uh, moving on, uh, let's also think about uh, how we construct the tangent line. Um, so how do we get the tangent line? We compute the derivative. We evaluate the derivative at the point. So here I'm thinking about x cubed and the point uh, where x or x naught is negative 0.5, right? So I'm finding the tangent line at negative 0.5 for the function x cubed. So I find its derivative. I then evaluate that derivative at the point. I get the y coordinate by substituting into uh, the derivative, or, or sorry, uh, by substituting into the function, I should say. So uh, my function x cubed, I've called i. That's something that I did up here earlier on. So this is substituting the value 0.5 into my function to get the y coordinate. Now I use point slope equation to figure out the equation of the line, and then I plot it. So here I will plot the tangent line together with the uh, function on the same plot. So x cubed is the red curve, the blue line is the tangent line, and we were finding the tangent line at the point where x is equal to negative 0.5. Well, there you see it. It just barely kisses the function. It um, you know runs through the graph in exactly one point. So there you have it, that's the tangent line. And we'll talk a little bit more about some plotting stuff in the next video, because uh, I don't think I can fit it in in a minute.